The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Welcome to the Cashman Mind, Body, Spirit Show. This will be very in interesting today, and I think it will be very important to your life. So be sure to listen very carefully, maybe take s some notes. And it's based on, on my experience uh, t speaking to patients. I teach a lot of people how to get rid of their diabetes, for example, kidney disease is uh, part of that. Uh, but my point is that preventing, stopping, re reversing kidney disease is largely possible. Not always, but largely possible. But we'll discuss today the, the science of it. And uh, so uh, step up to bat, take some notes, uh, maybe look me up personally uh, if you need to. Uh, the main preventable cause uh, of kidney disease uh, is type 2 diabetes. What's interesting is, and that you need to know, is that kidney disease is generally considered to have five stages to it. And I'll review those with you. But a lot of those stages, people don't have any symptoms. They're not even being tested for it. Uh, and they don't know that they are on the path to kidney disease. It's on, on the path to advanced disease that we can uh, prevent it and have any chance of reversing it. Otherwise, uh, when you get to, remember I said five stages, you get to stage four or five, uh, we can rarely reverse it anymore, maybe stop it occasionally. Uh, but uh, we need to catch it at stage one, two, and three. And I'll explain to you what they are. So you have control 80% of the time, but if you don't have the information, if we don't teach you the information, if the family doctor does not give you the information, uh, then uh, you'll be in the dark. And before you know it, you say, oh, you get stage four kidney disease, uh, and you're going to need new kidneys. And people don't live that long after they have that. So that's what we're working on today is prevention. And uh, you see, the kidney problems, the, the pharmacy industry, the processed food industry, the government, uh, they have got a hold of you and they're making a lot of money and they're not giving you the information to prevent it. There's money to be made in, in the beginning by these companies uh, through pharmaceuticals uh, uh, and at the end through dialysis and transplants. So they have these dialysis centers, uh, and, but, uh, but those people who have to go for dialysis and transplants have a limited lifespan. I want you to be aware of the st early stages where you have no symptoms, so you can prevent it, and you don't have to fall for this um, industry. So I say, wake up, wake up. That's why I am here today. Let's talk about a minute for the stages of uh, kidney disease. Uh, our kidneys, we have two kidneys on both sides, uh, and they have in them filters called glomeruli filters, millions of them, very tiny little filters, and they filter your blood and take out the toxins. They also uh, largely uh, uh, what's left over protein metabolism, but also it controls uh, sodium, potassium, uh, uh, phosphorus, it secretes some hormones uh, with, along with the adrenal gland, which helps f form your uh, hemoglobin uh, and also controls your blood pressure. We'll discuss that in more uh, detail. Uh, so 
first stage, we as children, normally most kids would have a GFR glomerulo. Remember those, those glomeruli that do the filtering. Uh, the rate that we can filter things is GFR glomerular filtration rate around 100. Uh, but as we get a day older, it slowly reduces itself. For myself, for example, who is 39 for the 46th time, added up. Uh, my GFR is around 82 or so, so it slowly decreases with age. But even uh, in the 70s and 80s, it's, the rate is around 70 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, stage one uh, uh, generally is about uh, uh, up to uh, uh, about 90, uh, uh, sometimes uh, 80. Then stage uh, two is down to 60, down to 60. And generally in those first two stages, you don't have many symptoms, but what you're doing, what type of diet you're eating, whether you exercise, eating a lot of meat, or uh, drinking a, a lot of milk, uh, can uh, affect it. And, and the GFR from about 60 to 30, uh, sta stage uh, three, that's our opportunity. Uh, but as you're approaching 40 and 30, though, uh, you're uh, heading to stage four, uh, uh, where things are uh, really critical. Uh, and some of these people uh, are on the way to dialysis, where they put you in a chair 14 hours a week, and, and, uh, and uh, they put catheters in you to filter your blood for you. It can be through your uh, blood system, a uh, fistula. It can be through the peritoneal uh, uh, cavity, but it occupies uh, a certain hours a week that you do this, otherwise you're not going to live. You got to do it uh, about three times a week, 14 hours uh, of, of, of dialysis. So uh, when you're in stage three, the 60 to 30, that's ex especially we need to work hard. If you do not, you will slip into stage four. You may not have uh, many symptoms. You may not have any symptoms. And, and, and your doctor is not ordering these tests. So demand a GFR test, no matter what your age, even as a child, because people can develop uh, kidney failure uh, even at a very young age. There are 26 million people in the nation mm -hmm. who have kidney disease, 26 million. That are in stage uh, uh, three. Mm -hmm. uh, 200,000 or so are on dialysis. Many die uh, 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 every year because their kidneys uh, uh, have failed. Uh, so it's, you must order this. And, and like I said, many times you go to a doctor and they check your cholesterol and they check this and they check that, but they don't check your GFR. Uh, other blood tests, which we'll discuss more later, can be serum albumin, serum creatinine, uh, BUN. There are other tests, blood sugar, your HbA1c, whether you have diabetes or, or not. We'll discuss those in more detail. Uh, but to, to uh, a GFR is very important. You need every test that time you get at least once a year, you know where your GFR is because of in 60 and 30, you must act and will teach you uh, how to avoid the kidney disease from progressing. And uh, uh, so uh, Medicare uh, has its own program for people for kidney disease, and they pay every dime. And the kidney people uh, arrange that, and that's good for you. But, but, but they also, I think, felt that if everything wasn't paid for, you might m motivate yourself to prevent the disease, reverse the disease. But everything's paid for. People get lack, lack of days ago. But, uh, but Medicare uh, has a separate program, no, de no uh, deductibles. And I noticed the doctors working for them who I tried to get them to help me teach prevention. The community, uh, uh, the, I think they own a lot of stock in the dialysis companies or something. Uh, they, they, they didn't uh, want to join me in, uh, in teaching people how to avoid kidney disease.
I wonder why. I, I wonder why. Just like pharmaceutical companies uh, uh, lobbying uh, money sent to senators and representatives who don't change the laws uh, so that w we all become um, uh, uh, informed. And uh, so uh, the U.S. death rate is 30 percent higher than in Japan. Japan teaches people how to avoid this disease. A lot more uh, information. Uh, we are 50 15 percent higher than in Europe. Yes. Uh, you might say, well, they have socialized medicine. Well, uh, if you go to their family doctor's offices, there are signs on the wall to get your GFR tested and how to get rid of your diabetes. Signs all over the offices. I've seen it myself. So prevention is, is huge. Uh, and actually, the number of people on dialysis in this country is 600,000 people go to these dialysis centers. I think there's four, three or four of these in Fort Wayne. People go there uh, and, and they dialyze you, but uh, they spend, don't spend much time. And, and, and most of these people are in stage four or five. And the, the disease, you might slow it down, but to get rid of it would be difficult. I personally coach a number of people with advanced kidney disease. I have one patient who was stage five, uh, st uh, stage five, and his GFR was five. I have it now up to 17 by, by get, getting rid of her diabetes. But kidney disease is a lot tougher to reverse. That's the reason you got to prevent it at higher stages. Once it's advanced like that, it will, uh, matter of fact, they don't think at all out of stage five that you could go to stage four, but I'm doing it uh, with a couple of patients, so I wonder if that's really ever been studied. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm doing it. I have this beautiful black lady who lost 50 pounds, got rid of her diabetes, and comes to see me with beautiful clothes on and, and looks a lot healthier, but, uh, but you, you still wonder, is she going to she says, I'm not going to be dialyzed. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that uh, in the end. Uh, but so far, three years later, she, she's alive. And the GFR now is 17. Uh, so she's in stage four and used to be in stage five. So maybe it is possible. Uh, but I'd rather have you work on it at earlier stages. Uh, um, so uh, the... Uh, 13 people die every day from kidney disease because they can't get enough kidneys uh, when they need one. There's a waiting list. Uh, and 13 die a day because lack of a, a kidney to transplant, lack of donors. And uh, so from 1980 to 2009, 1980 to 2009, our end-stage renal disease, which would be stage, stage 5, has increased 600%. Why is that? Uh, maybe because, because we are not teaching the people how to avoid the diseases that cause it, which uh, diabetes being the, causing 60 to 80% of it, um, that we're not teaching people how to get rid of the diabetes, which is easy. I teach people. You can get rid of type diabetes 90% of the time about a month, by changing the type of food we're eating. Fasting helps, makes it a lot quicker. I teach people the 16-8 fasting. You look at my YouTube shows, it, it's, it's on there. I've written books about it. Uh, th that, uh, so uh, there is hope. It's not a hopeless thing. There, there is, uh, is hope. And uh, so, uh, a GFR, uh, when it starts hitting 70 or so, we start really start getting worried. Uh, uh, and, uh, and after that, not that much can be done at, a, at stage four or five, although I am doing it with, with some patients, so don't throw in the, the, the towel. And uh, so, Lack of testing is a problem. And that's why I encourage you in, in, in proper testing. Uh, and at this stage, people are not getting enough protein because uh, uh, 
because the, the body is using the uh, uh, protein up, the amino acids are not being reassembled properly uh, because of uh, uh, poor kidney function. And uh, there is a strong relationship between heart disease and kidney disease. Yes, but both of those are seen, you know, with diabetes, but also uh, because uh, kidney disease is caused a lot by inflammation, but the inflammation is all over the body, uh, so it inflames the arteries and the vessels, and uh, heart disease is part of the picture because the inflammation affects the whole body. Uh, a lot of people, uh, some of the people are starting the treatment at stage three, uh, alas, so, uh, but the effects on your body are on every organ. There's a lot of crosstalk between the organs as to the hormone levels, the electrolyte levels, and uh, uh, when you have kidney disease, you have increased risk of cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, strokes, increased rates of cancer, because increased sugar levels, uh, increased inflammatory uh, uh, factors. Uh, Parkinson's disease has increased 150%. Uh, I, I know of somebody that uh, had heart disease at a younger age, and they put him on a statin drug. My last show was about statins, the anti-cholesterol drug. So I'd like you to look at that show, or at least read about it. Don't stop the drug because I said so. Read about it, talk to your providers, make them read some of the books I recommended in my last show. Uh, uh, and you, and uh, this individual was given a statin drug uh, for vast disease uh, and develop Parkinson's disease, which may be totally related to the statin drug. Statins will cause kidney disease, liver disease. So learn about it. Don't stop the drug because I said so. Uh, let's start learning uh, about it. Um, uh, and uh, people with kidney disease uh, have increased rates of dementia, depression, uh, the age much f faster. Uh, generally, if they go to stage four and five, they live 20 to 40 years less. You're dying much younger. Uh, and there's a high risk of sexual dysfunction, ability to perform males and females. Uh, if you go to stage four or five, it has a mortality r a rate of 25% a year. So let's prevent the disease. Uh, uh, and at age 60, the average patient uh, on kidney disease, life expectancy four years, increased rates of stroke. Uh, females with kidney disease uh, also develop osteoporosis of their bones because of the inability to properly uh, reabsorb the calcium and the phosphorus um, in the urine and the increased rates of depression and 84% uh, increased rate of suicide in people with kidney disease because the majority of patients of kidney disease also have heart disease also have uh, heart disease. And uh, so uh, the increasing rates of chronic kidney d disease is a road to hell. But I'm telling you how to prevent it, stop it, and reverse it. There is hope. But if you don't get tested, you may uh, go on this uh, road. And uh, uh, so uh, the... Uh, what are reliable predictors of kidney disease? What, number one is to know your GFR. Is it 30? Uh, I know somebody does 38, and every few months I get another test. He's going lower and lower because he's not following the proper way of eating, which I will go over there. Uh, another predictor uh, is use of statins. Statins have as a side effect Kidney disease, read the books in my, in my 
a YouTube show, which is based on this show here, should be on YouTube by now. Increased rates of smoking lead to kidney disease. Being overweight leads to kidney disease. Uh, abnormal magnesium phosphorus levels. A, a lot of uh, protein in, in, the, in the urine uh, predicts kidney disease. Remember that kidney's main function uh, is to take the waste products of protein and for you to you know, you know, urinate them out. Take a bear, for example. A bear may go into hibernation and, and say be pregnant already and, and she's overweight uh, and she will live off the fat in her body the whole six months that she's hibernating uh, and, and she's living off the fat, which makes ketones, fat molecules for energy. She, she de he doesn't need the kidneys. She never urinates the whole time, comes out in the spring, is skinny again, uh, and she never used her kidneys that whole time. That's why uh, uh, she did not upset the electrolyte system because she never urinated. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, importance proteins to check is the albumin in the blood. In the blood, that seventy percent of the protein that's in your blood. So that's a good blood test. The uh, al albumin to check it also in the urine. And people check a lot the albumin creatine uh, ratio is one way. And if that's uh, way out of whack, that's a predictor of trouble ahead. And uh, so uh, uh, good ones uh, to check too is blood pressure, is, is it out of hand? Um, and they have found now, now also in this book that I have up here, Stopping Kidney Disease, um, it was written by a patient who had advanced kidney disease. He was gonna have to get kidney transplant, but he decided to look at the medical literature. Uh, there's a thousand medical papers in here uh, by Lee Hall beautifully written. I encourage anyone to read that uh, who uh, has a friend or themselves on the path to kidney disease, I think. And Lee Hall, uh, over uh, 40 years later now, uh, never had a transplant done, but he followed a wellness program and he describes kidney disease, they're preventing it, and the science of it in great detail. I've read that book a number of times. I encourage you uh, uh, to read it. Uh, so uh, other things that predict kidney disease is, uh, is inflammation, malnutrition, your sodium level, your phosphorus level. We talked about that. Uh, so the albumin level of protein, okay, uh, is a strong predictor of mortality, the amount uh, that is in your urine, uh, if that's increasing, uh, and if the amount in your blood, if it's decreasing, uh, because the kidney is not filtering it out and, and, and keeping it in the body. So they are uh, strong predictors. Uh, and, uh, but the beautiful thing, thing is, you got control. But you gotta learn about the science of this because medicine, industry, pharmaceutical companies, the government, then dialysis center, then they're gonna tell you how to prevent progression or, or to develop the disease in the first place. Uh, uh, so uh, you have control. I, I did read a little because I like beans, that bean curd uh, is a well-tolerated <laughs> protein. <laughs> okay, so a lot uh, of the, the foods that you should or should not be eating, I will discuss in detail. Uh, so, uh, the, to eat uh, meat, milk, for, for example, uh, they're full of proteins, that, the casein in milk, that you don't want. So those are the things you should be avoiding. To eat more of a vegetable, type of way of eating is a great way of eating. And uh, what I teach people, eat two meals a day, 16, eight, 16 hours, uh, I'm, I'm not eating eight hours, I eat two healthy meals, easy to do, it's what I do, 135 pounds at age 39, 46 time, no pills, 
Well, I'm doing it. Did I always do this? No. My dad had a deli in New York. He sold nothing but processed food. I ate that stuff. I used to drink milk, had acne all over. But I've learned now, I've learned, but still survived all that. Uh, and I exercise regularly, you know, I recommend uh, exercise. Maybe not as much as I do, because I play pickleball five days a week. I tap dance in the basement in the mornings. Uh, get my feet moving so I play better pickleball. But who knows uh, about life, but we can certainly try to get healthier. Uh, so, uh, in, 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 in kidney disease, the reason that people develop uh, the heart disease, too, is, is, is the free radicals that are present in the, in the food uh, uh, that we're eating. Uh, so, the diet the world is consuming is causing an explosion of kidney disease. It's even worse than China and India. They don't have a good hospital system, so they don't even know that they got it. In this country, many patients who who have kidney disease in this country do not know it. They weigh 250 pounds, and their blood sugar was normal, and they say, oh, I don't have diabetes, so any disease go with it. They have not been properly tested. If you're overweight, odds are you are a diabetic. You need to get a serum insulin, not just the blood sugar. It's well known, except it's not what they're doing out there, uh, because uh, if we use that, we'd catch people on the road to diabetes 10 to 15 years before, before their time, and uh, the hospitals would be half empty. It's true. Watch my other shows on, on, on diabetes. And uh, so uh, what are factors that lead to kidney disease progression? A low albumin le level, remember? hypoalbuminemia, okay? Uh, and matter of fact, they can run a test on the urine for micro small albumin, a very good test. If that is becoming uh, uh, abnormal, you might, you're maybe on the path to kidney disease so to get a micro albumin test is a good one. Uh, it's, made, it's made by the liver. Um, uh, and protein made uh, uh, by the liver, but the filters uh, in the kidneys should be able to absorb them and send them back to the blood system because the blood goes through there, it's filtered, and then uh, it, it's uh, reabsor reabsorbed, but if it goes into the urine, and, it, and protein causes bubbling in the urine. To have a certain little bit of bubbling in the urine, uh, uh, would be normal, but it can get out of hand. If, the, if your urine is excessively brown, means there's a lot of protein there and your kidneys are not reabsorbing it, you probably have kidney disease. Uh, and so, signs of kidney disease are protein urine, that you, that you have protein in, in the urine. Inflammation, you can get what's called a uh, CRP test, okay? Now, the one that works the best is HSCIP, high sensitivity uh, information. I know people, patients, and, and friends, mine is uh, 0.2, uh, that, that's high as 8 or 10, and they have a, advanced information in the body, and they are very prone to get kidney disease, heart attacks, strokes, increased rates of uh, cancer, for example. Uh, they have oxidative stress. Um, they have acids in the urine. If you're, eat, if you're eating a, a lot of beef, for example, you'll get uh, acids in the urine, and when, when your body is more acidic, it's more unhealthy. That's one way to avoid kidney disease uh, is to avoid uh, an acidic type of diet, which we'll uh, teach you about. So, so sometimes we need to eat an antioxidant diet, which would be largely uh, vegetable and fruit type of diet. Um, uh, so uh, the microalbumin in the urine is a very important one to keep uh, uh, track of. So we, we also need the acid-base balance. Our body keeps up uh, us in balance from 7.35, which is in the acidic side, to 8.5 8, uh, uh, or so. And, and so we, we were on a very narrow acid base. You want your body to be a little more alkaline 
and not so acidic. But if you're eating nothing but steaks every day, uh, you're going to have an acidic, acidic body system, and you're more, more likely to get a chronic disease. Uh, and uh, so the, the chemicals that we, that we eat help transport uh, our hormones throughout our, our body. Uh, so, as um, a matter of fact, they can use the pH to see if it's acidic or alkaline and use it as a predictor of surgical outcomes. Uh, if you have a very uh, acidic blood system, and uh, a, a, another way to look at it is to get an HS high sensitive CRP albumin ratio. Uh, it's, a, it's a long predictor of mortality. You can see more discussion of it without that much time here. Uh, just Google it. Uh, HSCRP albumin ratio uh, is a good way to see uh, where, you, where uh, you're at. And uh, so uh, uh, the albumin, so if your albumin uh, level is, is quite low, your mortality can increase 30, 40 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the albumin to rise uh, in, in, your, in your blood, not the urine, uh, so your protein nutrition must be adequate. You need a certain amount of protein per day, but get it from vegetables. Get your proteins from, from vegetables because uh, they cause less oxidative stress. Uh, and they're healthy for you, but they must be adequate. You need a certain amount. Uh, and uh, the diet should be about 20% protein, mainly from vegetables, otherwise you're gonna increase stress on your kidneys. And uh, we also measure uh, the protein uh, content and how much uh, meat you're eating, for example, by checking your BUN, uh, in the blood, it can be checked in the urine too. And if it's above 20, it's of some concern. And uh, so, uh, uh, and to keep track of the information numbers, the CIP is, is critical. Uh, so you, we, we, we want an alkaline type of body, not acidic type of body. And uh, so, uh, so in summary, high albumin it, uh, is good for, for every kidney patient, I'm talking about the serum, not in the urine. Uh, let's talk a little bit about acidosis, since I uh, brought it up. They use the term PRAL, uh, potential renal acid load. What type of a PRAL diet are you eating? Uh, it's a calculated figure of nutrients in food that is determined that uh, determines the acidity and alkalinity of what you're eating. It's your prowl figure, okay? Uh, so the kidneys, which help r regulate the acid-base balance, should be between 7.35 and 7.45, 7.45 being on the alkaline uh, side. The kidneys, instantly enough, uh, balance the uh, ammonia we just made in our body uh, and, and, and has some available with a pH of 11 that it can put uh, into the system in case you're too much on the acidic side. So the kidneys um, can make uh, ammonia to keep alkaline uh, and the ammonia is a pH of 11. You know as much to the alkaline side that uh, it can use to keep our whole body system in that narrow pH range, in that instinct. And uh, what are acidic foods? Meats, eggs, dairy, grains, yes, yes, sugars. Grains, many of them get broken down into uh, sugars. Uh, veggies when it goes through the GI tract, become mainly alkaline in the GI tract. So there's a difference between acidic foods and alkaline foods. Uh, and uh, there's another term, NEAP, uh, 
meat endogenous acid, acid production that tells you uh, how much acid is produced by that type of eat. So the kidney secretes um, uh, quite a bit of bicarbonate and it also helps keep it in, in balance. It has a regulatory uh, system. And uh, the kidneys uh, don't just manage uh, bicarb, but they also help manage the hemoglobin that carries the oxygen in the blood system. Uh, and that by, by making the hormones that regulate that, isn't it interesting? Uh, so you can, uh, by, if you were to get this book in the library or buy it, it's actually cheap, $17 I paid for it, I think. And on page um, 65, it tells you uh, the content of acids uh, and where the foods that potential renal acid loads, and it lists uh, the foods, uh, uh, for, for example. Uh, and uh, uh, butter is 0.6, so it, you want a negative number for it to be uh, alkaline. Uh, bananas um, are, are minus 5.5, so they, they're alkaline. And um, peaches minus, remember I said fruits and vegetables are pretty good. Uh, peaches, 2.4. Here's one for you. Peanuts, 8.3 acidic. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? And um, walnuts, 6.8. <laughs> Acidic, uh, and uh, then look at beans, one of my favorite foods, minus 3.1, more uh, alkaline. O okay, and now it's the real test, beef, 7.8 alkaline. You see why that's not good for you? Um, and uh, corn beef, 13.2. Are you getting the point? So to look at this table and find out how alkaline and acidic the foods are, this is a great, uh, in Turkey, which we all thought was real healthy, 9.9, .9, so uh, that's uh, very uh, acidic, not necessarily as good for you uh, as, uh, you know, we, uh, we were thinking. So I think to have this book to let you know what, the foods are, I think, is, is kind of good. And uh, so the key to halting kidney disease uh, is in the produce market. It's not in the pharmacy. It's what you eat. Okay. And uh, by knowing whether foods are al alkaline or acidic, you can put the whole picture together. And, uh, and you will feel better. Your health will be better. Your future will be better. <laughs> we can play pickleball or tap dance together when we're 100. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> and uh, so you have to learn what are the good foods and the bad foods? What are the acidic foods? What are the alkaline foods? Uh, and, and there's a debate about protein, no doubt about it. How much protein do we need? In spite of not recommending meats and things, we do need some protein, but there's protein in vegetables. But the vegetable is much healthier. So generally, about 0.6 grams of protein per kilo but it's got to be the good protein. Actually, a good kidney diet is about 20% protein, which follows uh, the keto way of teaching. I use like a pyramid, 56% uh, good, fa good fats, omega-6 fats, 20% protein, and the rest uh, vegetables and, and fruit. You can vary that a little bit. Uh, but let me give you an example. A chicken breast has about 43 grams of protein, uh, one cup of soybeans, uh, 
has about six to eight. Four cups of cooked rice, about 20, just to give you some idea. Uh, and eggs, about 22. But eggs, uh, if you had advanced kidney disease, eggs are not a good thing. Three cups of milk, 24 grams, because you're trying to, you need a certain amount of protein, uh, but you, you want to keep it at 20% or so and not higher than that, or you will put a burden on your kidneys, and your kidneys uh, uh, will get worse, okay? And 40% uh, of people who have type 2 diabetes, which remember I said you can get rid of uh, in, in, in about a month, 90% of the time, by eating a proper diet. And if you do the 16-8 fasting, it'll happen twice the speed, okay? Check your blood sugars frequently, get one of these monitors, or speak to your doctor because if you change your diet radically quickly, good food, all you can eat, but your blood sugars will go down quickly. Because as your blood sugar goes down, the insulin level goes down, fat cells open up, fat cells go to the liver, make ketones, and that's what you're living off. The brain can even use ketones. So to understand nutrition, uh, so 20% uh, protein, it, it would be considered a low protein diet and it would be ideal for people with kidney disease, you do need some protein, but let it be from plants, much healthier, okay? Uh, and uh, what are high protein diets? Atkins diet, although they've written a new book now, the new Atkins, so I think it may have changed. And uh, uh, what are sh another ones uh, would, be, would be a zone diet, sugar busters diet. Th these all are high protein way of eating, remember, if you have kidney disease, you, you can't filter all that protein. It will damage your kidneys. Uh, so we want you to follow a reduced protein diet, but, but not a zero protein diet, about 20%. Uh, actually, you, well, there isn't any protein in the vegetables, so that's wrong. Uh, if you take an ounce of broccoli and compare it to an ounce of meat, the broccoli is twice the amount of protein except you got to eat a little more broccoli, <laughs> okay? And uh, uh, soy protein is full of isoflavins, isoflavins, and is a, something good uh, to eat. Uh, so uh, the dialysis uh, uh, patients, at that point, uh, you know, people are throwing in the towel, but don't give up. Uh, you might be able to get, get away from the analysis. There is some po possibility. And um, uh, pro protein modified may be better than restricted. Mm -hmm. In other words, modify your protein intake, but you don't want to go protein totally, and, and I we favor vegetables. And uh, vegetable protein has a, a less effect uh, on uh, meat protein uh, on, the, on the kidneys. Uh, so if you're eating mainly vegetables, you're eating protein, just protein and vegetables, some higher than others. And, uh, and, and the amount, you can see page 65 in the book, each vegetable, it has it listed, which would be a good reference uh, for you. Uh, so you don't have to eat only plant protein, uh, but, uh, but the, the ones that are full of bad proteins are meat, eggs, yes, eggs. I know somebody has advanced renal disease and was telling me the other day, his wife sent him to work with eight eggs every day. And I had a heck of a time convincing him that's not healthy. So eggs, fish, dairy, grains, and uh, other things, of course, that affect kidneys, uh, age, alcohol, cigarettes, physical activity. Are you exercising some? Exercise uh, is important. Uh, and, uh, but your plant meat ratio, uh, if, that, if you're eating many more plants, that lowers the risk of chronic kidney disease. Uh, every 33% increase in plant protein 
decreases chronic kidney disease by 23%. Wow, there's hope. You don't have to throw in the towel. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so the health benefits uh, also work if your GFR is above 60. It still has an effect, but uh, it will have on the lower stages where you're at 30 or 40, it has an effect. It's a necessary effect, but it will be less of an effect because the kidneys aren't working right. And uh, uh, so, and the earlier you start, the greater uh, the benefit, okay? And, uh, and eating plant proteins helps much better at higher levels of function, no doubt about that. And uh, eating meat was 1950s advice. It was wrong advice. And, and the uh, uh, kidney people uh, were recommending to follow only the sodium, the potassium uh, 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 in the blood. That's what they were basing. But the point is what Lee Hall is saying. There are many other factors that affect kidney disease besides just sodium. Uh, and your uh, 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 potassium, uh, and many other many other factors, the acidic load of the kidneys, uh, for example. Microalbumin, which we spoke about before, is the smallest protein in the urine. So that that tells you uh, that trouble is on the way. It would if that's starting to be abnormal. So that's the first test you should run. And, no, and the, normally, uh, it's about 30 to 300 uh, milliliters at 24 hours. If it goes uh, above 300, it's clearly abnormal. If it's less than 30, uh, you probably get good kidneys. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and the signs that your urine is bubbling uh, gives you a message. But it, it will bubble some as we get older, like myself, it bubbles some. So b because my GFR is not 100 any, anymore, okay? And uh, so no doubt, undoubtedly I'm spilling some protein, but I know my GFR is 83. So I want you to know what your GFR is uh, and, and to check the high sensitivity CRP to see how much inflammation is going on in your body is very important. Uh, the inflammation may be reversible. It can be reversible. I know people where it's like a CRP is eight or nine or 10, and they lowered it by changing the way they eat, they increase their exercise, they reduce their stress. Stress has a definite effect uh, on kidney disease uh, uh, too. And, uh, but as, if the blood sugar is high and your kidneys is having to filter out uh, a lot of sugar, sugar causes inflammation, partly because insulin is secreted when the blood sugar is elevated, and insulin is pro-inflammatory. It inflames your blood vessels all over the, the body. And uh, uh, people who have persistent proteinuria, you know, they increase protein in the urine, uh, have an increased rate of heart attacks, which you mentioned before. Uh, so let's uh, summarize things a little bit here for, for, for a second. Uh, so a healthy lifestyle of fruits and vegetables is important. Uh, foods that are high in antioxidant, flavonoids, polyphenols, that's vegetables. Reduce or eliminate red meat, processed meat, and actually, they say uh, maybe a glass of wine two or three times a week actually may be helpful. I saw that in this book. But then again, the latest science may be no, no alcohol is healthy. Okay. I'm just saying what I'm reading here. And uh, 20 minutes of exercise a day, not hard to do. I'm probably an hour and a half at least pick a ball, hour and a half, then I walk outside for a half hour. That's my daily activity, then I do some tap dancing, okay. Maybe a little bit excessive there. 
and uh, which reduces my stress because I'm not thinking of anything else. When I'm walking in nature, I'm even singing songs. I tweet back at the birds. Uh, I, I was having a singing contest with a bird uh, 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 today. Matter of fact, I had it. I sat in front of my house while I was studying for this show today. <laughs> It's a tree right next to me, and, and a bird got into it, and he's whistling at me, and I'm whistling back, and we're going back and forth while I'm reading. So uh, uh, learn to enjoy life a little bit, okay? Uh, as you reduce inflammation in the body, the amount of albumin in the urine uh, uh, changes uh, too. Uh, let's talk about inflammation a little bit more. Stress can trigger inflammation. And, uh, uh, it decreases your GFR. Uh, if your inflammation increases, your GFR goes down. Uh, inflammation may be in your body long before you have symptoms. That's the reason I say get your GFR tested, get your HSCRB tested. Even as a teenager, a lot of teenagers get diabetic and they have kidney disease or so 20, 30, and they're dead by the 50 or 60. That can be prevented. That's a good part of it. But you've got to have the proper test, at least yearly testing. Keep it in a book. Keep track of it. Put it in your computer. It's very important. Uh, the, uh, even at stage two kidney disease, um, the uh, uh, CRP may start to elevate already very early, very early. Uh, uh, and then it accelerates and heart disease accelerates as, as your function, GFR, goes down. Uh, excess fat can increase um, uh, inflammation because of cytokines and enzymes that are in the fat. But uh, remember what I said, though, uh, and some people uh, can be, indeed be overweight and not have any of those diseases. But 20% of the thin people get tested. I'm thin, I'm healthy still have abnormal CRPs, still have, have, have kidney disease because the fat could be in their liver and their pancreas. The good news is uh, that uh, with uh, proper nutrition, even the thin people or even the overweight people who have been diabetic for 20 or 30 years, and part of it is, and they're overweight, uh, and the fat, they can be thin, if, but the fat's in the liver and in the pancreas. If it's in the pancreas, it knocks out in secretion. But if they lose weight, even after 20, 30 years, the pancreas wakes up and secretes insulin again. I read it uh, in Jason Fong's book from Canada. It's right in there. He's a big time scientist. He's on YouTube a, a lot. Wonderful, now wonderful news. And, uh, and remember I said stress can be important, keep track of it. Uh, so the good news is the diet uh, can turn these figures around. Uh, and they have now the latest science has shown that there's micro RNA, okay? Uh, DNA tells the RNA what to do in the body. It starts with the DNA and then goes to the RNA. Not, now they've discovered micro RNA, uh, which uh, can, through epigenetics, change uh, the gene expression in your body. Really important that even not just the mother who's eating the food for the baby, is that we as adults can exercise more, think differently, uh, eat differently, and the micro RNA is rewriting our genetic script, our epigenetic, our telomeres, our telomeres, the end of our chromosomes, which help determine our age and, and, and diseases that, uh, that we have. Isn't that fascinating? So epigenetics and telomeres, the science is just uh, being uh, developed uh, at this stage, but, but they're pretty sure about the microRNA, uh, and that's why People can become uh, well again, or at least stop the disease. And there's some, it is more difficult to reverse kidney disease that uh, has 
be become a advanced because a lot of the changes have occurred is at a in the mitochondria, those little factories that are in every cell, at the molecular DNA level, and it's harder to change your genes. But I just told you the microRNA, which sends a message to your DNA in your mitochondria, can indeed be changed. Uh, it may be a little slower, but it's not a zero possibility of helping you. And I have seen that as you, as I spoke to you about this uh, beautiful black lady, Pam, who uh, uh, has changed her eating habits, exercises more. She was stage five kidney disease, and three years later, she's looking good and feeling good. So in her GFR is 17 now instead of five. So, and I think probably it's the micro RNA at work. So maybe stage five is not as hopeless and they don't, maybe they don't all need a kidney. I'm not saying to do that, but I want you to be open-minded ab about it. Um, um, and uh, so there are many effects of inflammation uh, in the body. It's not just the kidneys. It affects the heart and the brain and uh, thinking and the cardio renal system. Uh, uh, so the, the kidneys and the heart are indeed related. So if you, if you stop and prevent uh, your uh, kidney disease, you're also helping the circulatory system throughout your body. And uh, the other causes of kidney disease, of course, besides uh, uh, diabetes, for, for example, hypertension will be the second most common cause, which again, uh, what causes hypertension? Uh, hormones secreted uh, uh, in, in your kidneys, uh, angiotensin, for example, uh, uh, they uh, raise your blood pressure, aldosterone made in your adrenal gland, uh, which is stimulated by hormones in your kidney, cause, cause hypertension. Uh, so uh, uh, kidney disease damages proteins and, and, and sugars. Uh, uh, yeah, in, in your body, increase inflammation. And uh, so uh, let's speak a minute about dialysis, which I want you to avoid. Uh, stage can be recommended at stage four or five. Generally, uh, the filtration rate around 15 is the number when they start talking about dialysis. And, and then, uh, you're in that a year or two, and remember the inconvenience, and then they transplant a kidney, and, and that involves taking steroids, and, and sometimes they can't find a kidney. So what I'm trying to do is to stop, and for you to avoid all that. So in, in summary, what am I saying? Yeah, there's hope, but there's no hope if you don't participate and do some of the things that I talk about. Uh, and when you go see your doctor the next time you want a complete screening, you want a GFR test, you want a blood albumin test, a urine albumin test, uh, a blood creatine test, a urine creatine test, uh, you want a ratio of the albumin to the creatine, uh, CRP, HbA1c, which helps tell whether you're on the path to diabetes, serum um, insulin test, uh, and you'll have some idea what's going on in your life uh, uh, so that you don't die in your 30s and 40s and, and uh, 50s. Uh, there's a lot of life ahead of us. And do exercise, uh, take a walk, sing a song, take a tap dancing, <laughs> and, uh, and maybe read some of these books here uh, about, look at my YouTube shows on preventing diabetes, but look at this book by uh, Lee Hall, who uh, himself is a patient who was diagnosed uh, with advanced disease, but managed uh, to uh, uh, control it, uh, reverse it, and he, he reviewed, in essence, the world literature. Uh, the references are there. This is not just a book of, of, that he's tr trying to sell. 
he is in there the way of doing it. He even has in there, which I was skeptical about, was a, a, a from Europe, he got this called Albutrex medication. Uh, I, I was skeptical about it, but I've given it some patients. I think it, it's a good, healthy protein. So I would have a look at that, read about it. So thanks for, thanks for listening. Watch some of our other shows. And, and uh, uh, I do this because I love you, care about you. <laughs> Say hello if you see me like people do every day. That's why I do this. After all, I'm a doctor. And I do it because I love you, care about you. Uh, namaste. Namaste. Thanks for watching.